sitting afloat on the keel of my boat and I haven't a stitch on that's dry but the glow of the sun makes it all kinds of fun so I say to myself what can
so generational. Who on earth could ask for more? It's so temptational. Keep that music playing. Time will never drag. Let the thrilling never gain. Dancing till the break of day. As we dance the night away. To the pornographic crack. I'll give you my opinion of Ireland, Miss Paddy Adair. Whenever I think about Ireland, the picture that comes to me is a rainwashed hulk of bilious green set in a freezing sea. A land of hearty hunting girls galumphing in their galoshes, with red-faced men whose minds are closed as tight as their Macintoshes. Each a natural tenor, he's convinced, so where mountains of morn touch the sea, stand a million amateur John McCormick's bellowing Mother McCree. They grow misty about their shillelagh, a kosh, nothing more nor less, and sentimentalize over the shamrock, a sort of inedible watercress. They capitalize on their Irishness from Kildare to Glockamora. And there's no bore like a discussion which is half bejesus and half bigora. The local hoydens prefer to be known collectively as Colleen and insist that their small indeterminate eyes are a sparkling emerald green. You will also hear many tributes paid to their peaches and cream complexions. But their turn to tomato red by the wind while waiting on punctual train connections, each church is theatrical gilt and plush, but each theater is clerically shabby. So their abbey is like the Palladium, and they've called their theatre the Abbey. Their contributions to haute cuisine mercifully are few. They simply chuck everything into a pot and christen it Irish stew. If you try to have a logical chat, they suddenly turn into fawns and start being coy about little folk and pretend that they're leprechauns. They huddle round their fires, which produce a heatless fog by means of igniting a cubic sod hacked out of the local bog. In fact, if Ireland were removed from civilized atlas plates, I would gladly face life without George Bernard Shaw and William Butler Yeats. Now, if you seek a spiritual life, well, Ireland isn't the way. They've canonized the potato. It's the god to which they pray. Their brogue is ear offending with every hobbledehoy transmuting a singing English eye to a shattering Irish oi. To have a brawl, they need no excuse, they just hate keeping the peace, which explains why so many finish up in the New York City police. In fact, there's little I can praise about St. Patrick's race. So why do you come back to Ireland? Damn it, I like the place. You're impossible. It's a pleasure to take Take a trip on the lake With a boat A banjo and a girl Drifting along on the summery breeze Singing old-fashioned melodies The still water seas a carpet of dreams Each moment precious as a pearl When we're gliding along To a lovely old song In a leisurely world With only our hearts a world It's a pleasure to take Take a trip on a lake With a boat, a banjo, and a girl. It's a pleasure to take. Stars are shining bright above while sailing take with you on your love. The lake the sea, the silver ripples gleam. With a boat, you drift a banjo and a girl. You get so mellow and so gay, each heart is like a holiday. Drifting away, so 
the summer it brews, singing each fresh and mellow. Still what is still its confidence, my lord, when we're gliding alone and water, light and shade, a stuff of which sweet dreams are made along, we float the world a little boat. Just drifting hand in hand And all the world is wonderland It's a pleasure to take Love and laughter in the air Take a trip on a lake What is there that can compare? With a boat With a little boat, a banjo If you want to feel really grand Oh, on a boat With a banjo and a Girl. A knife, a shilling, and a piece of string Are the marks of a male who's a male Without these three, he still might seem attractive But he'll be passive when he should be active A knife, a shilling, and a piece of string Is a test that I've yet to see fail Find a man, any man about them. The string may be twine or a piece of fishing line, but I know what the lack of it proves. The knife may be plain, but at least it should contain a device for getting pebbles out of horses' hooves. Who gives a damn for a witty epigram when you walk through the fields in the spring? For you walk and walk and walk, and you have no need to talk to the man who's there to share the exhilarating air. Stride at his side on the swing. I planned for a man with a fine outdoor tan who's got a knife, a shilling, and a piece of string. Paddy, that's the silliest thing I ever heard in my life. What importance can there be in the fact that he is equipped with a pocket knife? A knife, a pocket knife. When a man is a man in the country, there is something he's certain to need. So that he may pick or whittle on a stick, or make a pipe out of a reed. With it he'll make a splint for a tiny break in a fallen sparrow's wing. When a countryman takes a country walk, he finds a knife the most essential thing. All right, a knife is a useful thing, but how about a piece of string? Some string, a piece of string. When a man is a man in the country, then it cannot be truly denied that a piece of string is a vital thing. There's always something to be tied. He can set any snare near a badger's lair or can tie a fly for a trout. When a countryman takes a country walk, he's got to have a piece of string about. All right, I'll grant you that, but I'm willing to bet you can't make a case for a shilling. A shilling. But of all the three, surely you can see, a shilling's the most important thing. For without one, I ask you, how can you buy the knife and the piece of string? For a man, maybe it's the epitome of wit, but to me, he will not mean a thing. If he hasn't got a knife, then I'll never be his wife. If he hasn't got a shilling, he will find me most unwilling. No string, then I've no wish to cling. My sort of man will be no dapper Dan, honey-tongued as marzipan, but a hero who can decorate my divan with a three-part talisman. I mean a knife, a shilling, and a
Daddy, there's so many things to be careful of in London, but most of all... Don't touch the water, it's chock full of microbes that bite. Each week we will ship you enough for the dip you should take without fail. Every Saturday night, don't breathe the dampness when black foggy rain starts to fall. If you go any place, tie a scarf around your face, but you'd be best advised not to go out at all. London's full of vermin, each one with a German, waiting to spring wherever you may go. And when you retire, don't peep neath the bed before you sleep. If someone is there, make sure it's someone you know. Eat Irish bacon, for goodness sake, and only that at the risk becomes small. Fish cannot be fresh after train rides from Dover if the meat is a dog who took Mrs. Flaherty's rover and an egg. Only safe if you boil it seven times over But don't touch the water at all Don't touch the water or you'll be a hospital case It was after doing that Miss O'Reilly's sister Pat She came back home with what? Looked like root on her face Don't be exposed to the cold London air in the streets You're under the sheets. If you take a train ride, see the window open wide. If passengers fuss, then here's what you should say. Simply tell them don't be daft. What you feel is not a drop. It's lovely fresh air to blow all your germs away. Don't ever go out, not if you're without an umbrella in case there's a bra. If you only had a gun The town is full of Protestants So if you should see one Remember quickly Cross yourself and run And don't touch the water It'll lead to your slaughter Don't touch the water at all At all, at all, at all Don't touch the water at all Work better than any cold cream They'll help to open up your pores As much as walking out of doors And turn the roughest skin To a velvety dream Rain, soap and water Will bring romance back to your life If you wipe off all that goo Your husband will look at you As though you're his Colleen And not merely his wife Though the smart beauticians And the cosmeticians Load you with products everywhere you go All dispensers know the truth The formula to preserve your youth Is sodium stearate mixed with H2O Though charlatans and fakes Promise all for goodness sakes Spurn their noxious artificial dough Your skin deserves a cleaning Just as often as your teeth a painted face will soon resemble a sort of blasted heath Scrub the whole lot off, you'll be amazed at what lies underneath Try clean soap and water, you'll look young as your daughter A boyfriend will ask you to elope, you see there's every hope Using plain water and soap Blake. Just right, dear Mr. Blake, how can I convey to you the London scene? Dear Mr. Blake, how can I display to you the bombazine? Satins and crepe de sheen, why I mean it's a riot of colour, so thrilling each society fate. 
In fact, it couldn't be duller Be quiet and write what I dictate We'll convince him your society's queen All London's at the feet of a girl called Eileen Just right It's a kaleidoscope The ladies wear at each smart affair Such a quintessence of iridescence And jewels of such size It almost hurts your eyes It's a kaleidoscope The whirl and chance you at every dance Who'd have imagined the rainbow pageant Of beautiful frocks like an artist's colour box That ought to do and really make him mind Make him miss you and kick his own behind Frankly that Lawrence is an abhorrence We'll throw him, we'll show him Of such glowing sheen One moment you view a saffron hue The next moment it's all heliotrope How can I convey the whole display The many say it's a Just for a moment I thought that I saw Someone I knew was standing there But why should I think it was her and what's more Why on earth should I care so very much so very much I never thought of her in that way So what brought this change in me? Why does the thought of her brighten the day? Why wish each girl was she so very much, so very much? Why, why should music start so suddenly in my heart? Why do I find that I long? For her voice She whom I never dreamed of And why does the whole of my being rejoice It can only be I'm in love So very much So very much Now 
and forever I am in love So very much They say hate is the next best thing to love well, it isn't. It's better. Hate is magnificent. Hate is the key. For when love is gone, then what comfort hate can bring? Your breath comes faster. Your heart almost stands still. At the mention of that certain someone whom you'd love to kill. Hate is so beautiful, hate can inspire, for when love is cold, hate can set you all afire. So I say, woe like a day, and cry into your gloom, hate is a far, far better thing than love. Hate is delectable. Shines within, and when love walks out, then how sweetly hate walks in. You're lost in daydreams, you laugh when there's no joke. When you're waiting for that special person you'd adore to choke. Hate is so wonderful, close like the dawn. Oh, when love is dead, something just as strong is born. So why weep or lose your sleep? Go shoot your turtle dove. Hate is a far, far better thing than love. Hate is immutable. Hate is profound. And when love is lost, then how swiftly hate is found. You're cold, you're burning, and how quickly you blush. When he comes along the one and only whom you long to crush. Hate is so magical, hate that survives. And when love departs, see how welcome hate arrives. So I sigh, best to apply the cure I'm speaking of. For hate can be very sweet. Hate can make life complete. Hate is a far, far better thing than Do all the dukes and earls end up marrying gaiety girls? What is it that they have got? Better bred ladies have manifestly not. Well, it's not their natural resources. Other young ladies have plenty thereof. But the way stage sirens cause divorces is the way their resources are taken care of. You have to do your duty for beauty the way that the beauties do. They may be well experienced, but prior to slumber, they apply lay virgin out and eau de cucumber. The way to a husband who really don't is an egg julep shampoo. No enchantress would allow herself to be viewed without lip salve, freckle cure, and eyelash food. You have to do your duty for beauty before beauty does a thing for you. My dear Miss Grant, how good of you to come. I've been hoping 
that you'd appear. I'd like you to sample every example of what we have to Dreamlike vision, no nature created you. Quiet and trancing, you will find that it's true. Men may rave of beauty unadorned, but who gets the kisses? The girls with all of the artifices you must do. Your duty for beauty, from face massages to decorating tages, from wrinkle removers. Now we can really be friends Now you are really my pal There is no power Can weaken our morale Just hear us stand and shout it What you do for me I can do for you Put it there Fair and square I'll stick to you Black and blue will see it through And though it was true at the start we two were oceans apart Now we are making amends You and me in perfect harmony Now we can really be friends Funny, I no longer hate you Sure, and I'm a changeable creature But it's down to your wonderful nature Yes, I admit, that must be it In this partnership that's new Everything's peaches and cream Now we two are united Now we can really be friends Now we can share a duet Show every lover We're more than half a quartet Come any wrong, we'll right it Partners we will be Everywhere we go When the day Come what may Must a strike up the band When we're united we stand Facing whatever fate sends Me and you, strong and true You and I till the day we die Us and us, why it's marvelous This is how it ends You and me in perfect close harmony Now we can really be not really Sigh for a ghost 
The girl I love is lost You are so beautiful But you won't do For you're no longer the girl Congratulations, Paddy, you finally cast aside Those frail and feminine virtues you always used to deride You're a big success, you're on top of the world You're all that you wanted to be But when I look at you, it isn't a girl But a board meeting that I see I hope that you'll be happy in your new way of life. Continue to wear the trousers and take a man for a wife. I never wanted a chocolate box girl, a beautiful and a dumb one. But in proving you can equal a man, Paddy, you become. So farewell, my love, adieu, for you're no longer the girl I knew. Sweet. 